This is a message to all of Africa. And Burkina Faso stands in solidarity and supports all the peoples of Africa who are suffering martyrdom. But we also want to say that it's time for Africans to stop pitying their fate, to stop brooding and lamenting. We must fight. It won't come from heaven by itself. We must fight first. And God will help you. And Burkina Faso is ready to help all peoples. Captain Ibrahim Chaori poses new challenges to the international gold industry. He announced that he will withdraw mining permits from foreign companies and extract the gold himself. He said in a radio address a few days ago, We will cancel the gold mining permits of mining companies in our country. We know how to mine our gold, and I don't understand why we are going to let multinationals come and mine it. Nous essayons aujourd'hui de moderniser un peu. C'est à l'issue de ça que nous avons créé donc euh, la Sonaspe, une société qui va se permettre de pouvoir exploiter et de commercialiser nos substances précieuses, notamment l'or. L'or que les jeunes exploitent, que d'autres personnes viennent acheter à vil prix et qui contribuent à nourrir le terrorisme qui sort du pays sans que nous n'ayons aucun contrôle, nous avons décidé de créer cette société pour essayer de reprendre le contrôle de nos sites miniers et pouvoir permettre aux jeunes qui y sont de produire de façon plus mécanisée et plus respectable. Burkina Faso ranks as the fourth largest producer of gold on the African continent, with its mining sector experiencing consistent growth in recent years. In a significant policy shift, military leader Ibrahim Chaori has declared that certain international mining companies will no longer be permitted to extract gold in the country. This decision aims to assert greater control over the nation's resources and reflects a broader push for self-sufficiency within Burkina Faso's economic landscape. Some of these mining companies include Endeavour Mining UK, West African Resources Australia, Nord Gold Russia, and Horizon Gold Corporation Canada. Burkina Faso is home to nearly 24 million residents with around 430,000 individuals engaged in employment across more than 440 million sites located throughout the nation. Gold holds a critical role as the country's primary export and military leader Ibrahim Traore aims to increase domestic gold extraction. At this point, it remains unclear which specific companies will have their mining licenses revoked as a result of the recent announcements. Among the prominent gold producers operating in Burkina Faso is Endeavour Mining, which is listed on the London Stock Exchange. Other active companies in the region include Russia's Nord Gold, Canada's Horizon Gold Corporation, and Australia's West African Resources, WAF. On the 8th of October, West African Resources communicated that it had received assurances to retain its mining license suggesting that Ibrahim Traoré's comments may not directly impact their operation at this time. Now, the Western powers are not happy. We are already seeing them fight back like this Australian best exploration company, which has secured about $4.4 million to fund an arbitration against Burkina Faso. Australian gold company Sarama Resources is planning to take action against the government of Burkina Faso. This is happening because the government has taken away an important permit that Sarama needed for exploring for gold. The company believes that this decision is unfair and is seeking a solution through arbitration, which is a way to resolve disputes without going to court. The company is asking for a lot of money because the government took away the Tankoro exploration permit last year. This permit is very important for Sarama resources because it is a part of their Sanutura project, which they own completely. The Sanutura project is located in the southern Hunde belt of Burkina Faso, where the country's biggest gold reserves can be found. Sarama had permits to explore the gold deposits in this project, including the Tankoro deposit, which has millions of ounces of gold. Sarama Resources says that the government's decision to take away the permit was illegal and has made their project worthless. They claim that this action has completely ruined their investment in the project. This permit issue started after a coup in Burkina Faso in September 2022, 
when military leader Ibrahim Traore took control and Simon P.L. Busim became the, pr the new Prime Minister of Energy, Mines and Quarries. After spending over 10 years exploring and developing their project, Sarama was ready to share their early economic report to help move the Sanitura project forward. However, in September 2023, Busim told the company that their application for the permit was rejected. This cancellation happened almost two years after the early minister, Dr. Bashir Oedrago, had approved the permit. Lucim even mentioned last year that the permit could be bought by someone else. In a statement, Sarama Resources announced that it will move forward with filing a request for arbitration and plans to prosecute its case to the fullest extent possible. This request will be submitted to the International Center for Settlement of Investment Disputes ICSID, as part of the Canada Burkina Faso Bilateral Investment Treaty BIT. To prepare for the arbitration process, Sarama has secured funding from Rocky Capital. This funding consists of a four-year non-resource loan facility totaling 4.4 million US dollars which will be used to cover all costs and expenses related to the arbitration. Christine Young, a partner at the law firm Boys Shiel Flexner BSF, which represents Sarama, mentioned in an email to CDR stroke ALB that this case highlights the unfortunate resurgency of resource nationalism occurring across West Africa in recent years, including in Burkina Faso. Yang also expressed optimism, stating that the litigation funding now secured, they look forward to fully vindicating Sarama's rights under the treaty. She emphasized that this case illustrates the wide geographical, geographical reach of their arbitration practice at BSF, especially in Francophone Africa over the past two years. Andrew Dining, the founder, President and Chief Executive of Sarama Resources stated in a recent announcement, the establishment of a non-recourse funding facility to cover all expenses related to the company's arbitration case represents a major step forward in its pursuit to redress for the substantial damages suffered as a result of the government of Burkina Faso's illegal actions. The company first alerted Burkina Faso about its intention to begin arbitration proceedings back in November 2023. According to Sarama, the government did not adequately respond to their attempts to resolve the disagreement peacefully at that time. You can see that this arbitration that the Western powers are not going to let Ibrahim Traore just kick them out like that. They are ready to invest funds in this gold struggle. And you are left asking, is Ibrahim Traore ready for the risk of economic independence? And now, to understand this fight, you need to understand that gold has been very profitable to the Western companies for so many decades now. Because gold is a vital element in the electronics industry, as it is used in computer chips, circuit boards, mobile phones, and various connectors. Additionally, it plays a crucial role in the medical devices and dental technology. The widespread use of gold can be attributed to its unique properties, including relatively high electrical conductivity, exceptional resistance to corrosion, and excellent soldering capabilities, all of which make it an ideal choice for these applications. First, Gold is used in computer chips and circuit boards, which are like the brains of your electronic devices. These parts help your devices process information and communicate with each other. Gold is a good conductor of electricity, which means it allows electricity to flow through it easily. This property is crucial because it helps your devices work properly. In fact, gold has one of the highest levels of electrical conductivity among all metals. Second, gold does not rust or corrode easily. This is important because electronics often go through heat and moisture, which can damage other materials. Since gold can resist this damaging effect, it helps electronics last longer. This is especially important for things like mobile phones and laptops, 
which we use daily and want to keep functioning well over time. Another reason gold is favored in electronics is its excellent soldering ab abilities. Soldering is a process that connects different electronic parts together, and gold makes this process easier and more effective. When two parts are soldered together with gold, they create a strong connection that is less likely to break. This is why gold is often used in connectors, which are the parts that join different cables and devices. Gold is also important in the medical field. For example, it is used in medical devices like pacemakers, which help keep hearts beating regularly. The same properties that make gold useful in electronics, its conductivity, resistance to corrosion, and soldering abilities also make it valuable in medical technology. Overall, gold is a special metal that is very useful in various industries, especially in electronics and medicine. Its unique properties make it a preferred choice for manufacturers, allowing them to create devices that are efficient, durable, and reliable. With gold's widespread use, it plays a key role in our daily lives, helping everything from the phones we use to the medical devices that keep us healthy. Ibrahim Chauri's recent big decision to take control of gold mining in Burkina Faso, as he wants to remove foreign mining companies from the country, this is important because Burkina Faso is the fourth largest gold producer in Africa. The country provides a lot of gold that is used to make many electronic devices like smartphones and computers. Gold is really very important in electronics. It helps conduct electricity and doesn't rust, which means it works well in parts like computer chips, circuit boards, and connectors. When Toyota takes charge of gold mining, he may want to help local people learn how to process and produce gold themselves. This could mean that there is more gold avail available for the local businesses, and it could also be sold to other countries affecting how gold is traded around the world. However, there are some worries about what this decision could mean for the prices of electronics and tech products. If the foreign companies that usually mine gold leave, there might be some problems getting enough gold. This could make it harder to get gold quickly, leading to higher prices for the materials needed to make electronics. Since the tech industry depends on a steady supply of gold, any problems with getting enough could make gadgets and devices more expensive for everyone. On the brighter side, having local control of gold mining could help bring new ideas and improvements to Burkina Faso. The government can manage these resources well. It could create a new local industry that focuses on refining gold. It could lead to new jobs and help local people learn new skills, which would be good for the economy. But there is a risk. Without help from foreign mining companies that have experience and money, the change could come with challenges. Chaori's move is part of a larger trend in Africa where countries want to take back control of their natural resources from foreign companies. This might inspire other African countries to do the same, leading to questions about how resources are extracted globally and whether it is fair. While Ibrahim Chaori's decision to take back gold mining could help Burkina Faso grow and thrive, it might also create problems for the electronics and tech industries around the world. People in the industry and everyday consumers will be watching closely to see how this affects gold supply and the prices for electronic products. But at the same time, the Western powers are also watching. And to be honest, they will surely fight back. Thanks for watching. Leave your thoughts in the comment section below and let me know what you think is going to happen to Burkina Faso in a few decades after taking control of this gold mining.